But Specialised Exhibitions was formed in uh, 67. I think the first exhibition was held in 68. It was the building show. Um, then we went into the mining side of it. And in fact, in 2012, we have the... It's the 40th year that we'll have electro mining. It's every second year. Right, yeah. So it'll be the 20th expo. We were, in those days, owned by uh, Montgomery Exhibitions, which is the largest privately owned exhibition company in the world in those days. Yeah. Um, it's split up since then. Uh, we're still owned by uh, Montgomery uh, in England. The beauty about it is what happened is that a lot of those countries that came out here have now set up in South Africa. They set up businesses in South Africa. So that has helped to develop tremendously part of the uh, the industry here. These chaps that come in here from, from, from international companies, international visitors, uh, they spend far more than the normal visitor. And, and we do contribute towards that. Our big show is Electro Mining. It's probably mm. the third largest mining show in the world. Um, it's got an international brand. It's well known. The biggest thing in my in my personal involvement with electro mining was when President Mandela opened it, where we tried to get Africa visitors into our shows. It is a bit of a battle. It is a bit of a battle. We do get them. We used to get a, a large number of visitors from Zimbabwe, obviously, because of their, their mining involvement. Yeah, yeah. We do a huge amount of promotion, such as uh, uh, visitor tickets mm. uh, into Africa. Right. And we have a, a um, the chap who handles that specifically for us promotes all our shows into Africa. First of all, you've got to get enough exhibitors there so when the visitor comes, he's got a wide variety of stuff to see. That's critical to a show. Yeah. Each show has to have an event. It's got to be an event. It's got to be entertaining. People have to enjoy coming to a show. They've got to be there, face to face discussions, demonstrations, events. Uh, there's conferences that go alongside. All of that helped to work towards making it a successful show. You know you had a successful show when the next show is basically a 70-80% repeat business of exhibitors coming back to that okay. show. When you go out and, and sell an exhibition, the, the company's spending a lot of money. If you send out somebody to go and tell them this and, and promote it to it and sell it to them, and they don't have the confidence in that person, forget about it. So. There's a lot of our people have been here for a very long time. We've got long-serving staff members who know the industry. The, 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 the exhibitors have total confidence in them. They go to them for advice, they'll listen to them, and they get to know their company. And that's absolutely critical. In about 2003, I think, we bought the, the Expo Center, which is the MTN Expo Center now. We bought it because it went bankrupt. And we knew that if we didn't get involved there, they would have, could have sold it off for something else. Right. And we wouldn't be able to hold our biggest show, Electro Mining. The only show we could hold is there. We got the World Cup after that, and then we were appointed as, as the broadcasting centre. So that place was, a lot of money was spent over it, it was developed fantastically. So we were involved in that from Montgomery, who owned 43% of that, we were yeah. very much involved in the World Cup from that side. Yeah. The surrounding area became well known because it was right next door to the to soccer city, yeah. to the stadium. Going back to, 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 to the events and the exhibition site, it was a bit of a bloody disaster for us in a way because we had no place to hold an exhibition. Mm. We couldn't, uh, we would have been crazy to, to even try and hold an exhibition during the World Cup. So we had to postpone certain exhibitions. We had to move them forward. We had to change them. So it, it cost us. Look, I mean, obviously a lot of people that came out here, came out here as a first time visitor. And they realized that, you know, there weren't, as I used to say, old cliche, lines walking in the street time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a pretty civilized, well-run economy. Yeah. Um, with great hotels, great restaurants, uh, lovely places to visit from national parks to private game reserves. And Cape Town is obviously, I mean, is, you know, Unbelievable. People, when they went there, couldn't believe what they'd seen. Those are first time visitors. So from that point of view, they go back, they talk to everybody, and you know how that develops. And one says the other one carries on. Amazing promotion for South Africa. And yeah. certainly, I think it will help us in any future. For more videos, please visit www.voicesofsouthafrica.com.